Robbie Burns here, and I am going to review Staff Pad for iPad OS in this video. And when I say I'm going to review Staff Pad for iOS, I actually am not going to do that in the entirety of this video. What I'm going to do instead is direct you to my blog post, which you are probably reading if you are watching this video, because this is actually a supplement to that blog post intended to show some of the design elements of the app that I really appreciate and to give people who are reading my post some live examples of how well StaffPad parses my musical handwriting into professional notation. So what I'm going to do here is I've got my iPad all booted up. I'm going to tap StaffPad. It's in the lower right corner. And you'll notice first the home page. This is where you can see your most recently viewed documents. I am going to say this at least five times over the course of this video. I deeply appreciate the design of StaffPad. I think it is the most elegant score app that I've maybe ever used. It has the exact right balance of what features it has and which features it does not have. And it comes through in a way where none of the menus really feel like they have more options making the experience feel really heavy. Uh, so this makes the program run really smooth, but it also means that you're never looking at so much information on the screen that you don't know where to click or tap. I really appreciate this, especially for my needs as a middle school band director. I'm not composing a symphony. I am generally just writing flute parts for my jazz band tunes that don't have flute parts or reconstructing a missing part from my library or, in the case of my past concert, I had to write some percussion parts to some of our repertoire because I have a really big percussion section, you know, typical middle school band director stuff. So, um, you know, that when I say that it's a really well-featured app, I'm speaking from that perspective of it doing a lot of the things I need well and then not much more than that. Uh, let's look around a little bit. Uh, the library is all of the scores that are in my staff pad library. I love, again, to piggyback off that last sentiment, uh, the templates are super straightforward. There's no mariachi band in here. It's just really high, you know, the, the stuff that you need the most often is listed here. Collections to listen to some demo scores. You can download some really nice audio sample libraries, uh, but then they're only going to work in StaffPad for iPad OS. For example, if you spend all the money on the Spitfire orchestra samples, it's not like downloading it on the Mac or the PC where you can now use those samples in Logic Pro or Ableton Live or Sibelius. It's just going to work in StaffPad. So that's what you have to keep in mind. They, they do se very seamlessly integrate with this application, though, and I appreciate that. So let's go to Home. By the way, uh, you can actually get to your files through the iOS file system. There is a StaffPad folder that is automatically put inside your iCloud drive. It's right here, and I like that this is here. You can uh, kind of drag some things around, like if I want to put a file on my desktop, it's really handy. I do like how native iOS apps, when you launch them, they show you the files app within them. For example, notice that I just launched Pages, and I, I see something that looks very similar to what I see if I actually launch the files app. Um, it's a minor detail. A lot of professional software has a splash page like this, though. You know, Microsoft Office, Photoshop. Uh, it's just, and, and it's a really nice screen. And look at this dissipating fog. Really, really classy here. I'm going to open a new score. And I'm going to go ahead and add some new instruments. I'm going to put uh, an oboe in here. Again, I like that there is a fairly limited selection of instruments. For my use, it's just the instruments that I need. I'm not digging through hundreds of different kinds of trumpets just to find what I'm looking for, which again, might not work for you, but for me, it's great. Okay, I am gonna talk a little bit about how you do stuff. There's kind of three ways you can do things. You can draw on the score, you can use the toolbar up at the top of the screen, and then there's a lot of contextual menus that you see when you touch the screen with your finger. I'm um, going to go ahead and just start writing, since that's probably what you want to see most. This is actually the thing that I struggled the most with when using StaffPad. 
I got better at writing notes as I progressed. Even still, I have some trouble. Now, let me do that again. I actually want to talk about something that StaffPad does that other score apps that do this whole turning your handwriting into notation thing. A lot of the other apps get it wrong. StaffPad doesn't parse it as you go because that's not really how people's brains work. Like if I were using Notion and I started drawing here and I froze for a second, it would try to convert those two notes. But I might actually not want two quarter notes. I might want this to be some eighth notes. So I appreciate that StaffPad will just let your handwriting float there until you tap somewhere outside of the measure. If you make a, state, a mistake, you can tap on a note with the Apple Pencil and just drag it where you want it to go. Super straightforward. If you run out of space, you can just drag with the Apple Pencil the bar line to the end. Another really nice detail. Now notice when StaffPad sees that I've written more notes than can fit into the measure, it lets me do it, which is another great design choice. Uh, it just kind of leaves them in there, highlighting the measure red. It'll do this if I also do not have enough notes in the measure, highlighting it gray. This is really cool because it, again, it just allows you to leave free floating thoughts in there without having this cognitive overhead of did I write it in the correct way or not. Now, if I write some things, I'm gonna to try to get StaffPad to be confused for a second because I want you to see what happens when you do not get all of your handwriting to be recognized correctly. So I'm gonna start writing really messy. Let's just say that I write some things in here. Now, look at this measure, it's highlighted yellow, but the things that were not parsed, StaffPad doesn't try to just guess it, like, ooh, that's like a whole rest or something. Instead, it leaves it in my handwriting, which allows me to go back and correct it to something more like what I want later, which is, again, super useful. I did find, and maybe it's just in my head, I think this is happening, that if I had some trouble with a measure and it turns yellow, that it's really difficult to get that measure to register successfully. It could just be in my own brain. Now, I really love the implementation of the Apple Pencil for erasing in StaffPad. There's no eraser tool or mode. You just hard press on the note. And it means that you don't ever have to flip the pencil around. Well, you couldn't do that anyway because there's no eraser tool on the back side of the pencil. But it actually is even easier than if there was an eraser on the pencil because you just press a little harder. Now, this means, of course, that sometimes you accidentally erase things we don't mean to. It's not as annoying as it sounds. You get used to it. Now, some of the things that you might be looking for are not on the screen. So I'm going to tell you where to find them. Uh, what about bar line stuff? A lot of things are discovered by long pressing in certain parts of the staff. So I can change the bar line depending on what I want. I can change the key signature can change the time signature just by long pressing. Because your hand is already right there on the screen because you're writing with a pencil, it feels really natural to do. Long pressing off the staff allows you to add text or lyrics. There's also the option to add chords. Now, StaffPad does not have the most features for chords and lyrics, but what it does do, it does really, really well. I also appreciate that there's not some separate mode for dynamics. It's just a text style. Notice when I type a P, it gives me all sorts of different options and even adds them to the software keyboard so that I can get to what I want really quickly. You can technically add dynamics with the Apple Pencil. I really struggled with it throughout my testing. I can get pianos, but I really could not get fortes. Could it just be my handwriting. Sometimes I can get hairpins. Um, I'll show you how to get those another way in just a moment. Now you'll notice at the top of the screen that there is a toolbar. Now, StaffPad solves the problem of tools 
in features in an interesting way. Rather than cramming a bunch of stuff up there, they actually have this arrow in the upper left corner where you can switch between two sides of the same toolbar. I think this is kind of interesting because it saves some clutter, but I found myself not really sure of, of the logic behind what's on this side of the toolbar and what's on this side, and I was constantly forgetting which version of this toolbar I had to be on to get to the button I wanted. I actually think it would be really nice if you could customize it because there are buttons that I use way more often than others. And things like the play and pause button show up on both sides, but I actually don't really play back my score that often. However, things like um, undo and redo, I would love to constantly be on the screen. So speaking of undo and redo, there in the upper left corner, we can really easily add other instruments to our score from that menu. Let's say that I don't quite like the way that Staff Pad is playing back my crescendo in Measure 2. You can actually customize the automation with the Apple Pencil. So I'm actually drawing this automation curve on the screen right now with the Apple Pencil, and it's super refined and accurate. I can toggle between a transposing and a non-transposing score. Of course, I can play it back. And then I have things like version history, a quick home button, and the share sheet. Let's talk about the share sheet for a second. It's got all of the things you would expect from a score editor. You can save the parts and score to PDF, export an audio recording, save as XML, MIDI, or a staff pad score. Now I've said this before and I'll say it again, I really like what staff pad has chosen to put on the export menu. It's just the options that I want and pretty much nothing else. So while there are not as many options as something like Sibelius or Dorico, for my needs, I appreciate how there isn't all this extra clutter. You can really easily share your PDF to the file system or with someone else. And I one just little minor thing is that on iOS, usually when you successfully export something or share it, the menu goes away. In SaffPad, it's more of a mode, so you have to remember to toggle it back off once you're done. Um, that's probably something only I would notice or care about, but just a thing. Um, all right, we got the settings menu. Uh, this is one place where I think that there could be more options. I'd love to be able to customize the gestures of the Apple Pencil or even the toolbar. Wouldn't mind just having some more scrollable options here. And then all the way on the right, we have the digital assistant Fenby. And Fenby can do a whole lot of things. They're listed on the Staff Pad website. I had mixed success getting them to work, but for the things that I could get to work, I was very delighted at how much easier they were than digging through menus. For example, add strings. Ta-da! Very easy to do. Let's go to the other side of the toolbar. We have voices. Those work more or less the same as you would expect. They're color coded. Then we can scribble on our score. This is just an annotation feature. Because writing with the Apple Pencil by default turns your notes into professional notation, it makes sense that there would be another mode you have to go in just to draw freehand. Of course, I can't think of really any score apps that let you even draw freehand since most of them are designed with a PC in mind and not a stylus. Then we've got this little loop tool, and this is super easy for copying and pasting. You just select what you want and then tap where you want it to copy. Speaking of copying and pasting, um, double tapping a measure is how you select an entire measure. I'm gonna go ahead and do that in just a second here, double tap. And adding more measures is really easy to do. And then you can do things like copy, cut, paste. I really like using the three finger gestures on iOS, which came out with iOS 13 this past fall. If you're reading my blog post and you scroll down a little bit more, you can actually see me in action doing this where you actually can see what my fingers are doing. If I pinch with three fingers in, it's gonna copy and then if I double tap somewhere else and then pinch out with three fingers, it's gonna paste. I can also take three fingers and swipe them to the left and right to undo and redo, which is another iOS 13 thing. 
All the way to the right of the toolbar, we have reader mode, which if you are using the reader app that came out with this for uh, with this staff pad update, then you can beam this score to other musicians. So if I've got an oboe and a string quartet, they can have the reader app on their music stand and I can beam this score directly to them. The updates even happen live, so that measure would get deleted right in front of the oboe player's eyes, I believe. We also have a metronome, and this one is pretty important. This is where all of the other things that I haven't mentioned are. I really like the implementation of the tremolo. You just tap on the note with the Apple Pencil that you want, and then drag to the right, and then you can drag up and down like this to change the appearance there. I far prefer this way of getting hairpins in the music by just simply tapping with the Apple Pencil where you want it to start and end, and then dragging up and down with the Apple Pencil to change the direction. A lot easier for me than handwriting them in, which I didn't have much success with. For mottos and rehearsal marks, I used a ton. I, I kind of wish you could organize these. I dragged in, around a lot to add rehearsal markings to my music when I was working with this earlier in the month. I do appreciate how when you add a rehearsal marking, it appears in the ruler up at the top area of the screen. In fact, I really also appreciate, since you don't really look at pages in SAFPAD, it's more like just one giant panoramic view. When you're kind of out in the middle of your score, watch how the title and the composer fade to the upper left along with the name of each instrument. And then this ruler is nicely designed to give you a visual indication of where you are. And it shows your rehearsal markings as well, right on that ruler, which I think is nice. So I tested this application right when I went on leave for the birth of my first child. And I have to say that I appreciated a workflow that was more mobile rather than booting up a hefty engraving program to make things like a real simple flute part for one of my band students. Instead, StaffPad is light, simple, straightforward, and because it runs on iPad OS, I felt like while I was holding a baby in one arm, I could really easily just kind of drag it around the house with me into whatever room I was in and just get a couple measures done here and there in a way that I don't really feel like I can do that with something like Finale or Sibelius. So I would give StaffPad two thumbs up. I do think that the handwriting recognition needs work, but I got significantly better at it as I went. Two things that helped me that the StaffPad support team told me were number one, Try to, if you're struggling in the earlier stages, try to do notes in the first pass and then add articulations and then try dynamics in a third pass until you really feel like you've learned. And see, I still didn't get the dynamic there. So this is an example of when I might just say insert text and then I might go up here and add my hairpin. Now, to be totally honest, I still did that just then faster than I would do it in a lot of other score programs. So it's hard to complain. And that's StaffPad for iOS. Hopefully I'm not missing anything major. If this video and blog post were helpful in your decision to whether or not you want to try out StaffPad, please let me know. Thanks for watching.